Uh, good morning, everyone, and welcome to Classroom 20 Live. Uh, some of you know me, Lorna Costantini. Big George and I are here holding up the fort today, and we're so happy that you could be with us. Uh, Kim Case, our, our regular right hand person, has just had a relapse again and not well to be with us today. So I think, ever, can we all send a smiley face to Kim? She's just had such a, a difficult past few months. And uh, yeah, Peggy says, really hard, you know, because we have to work double duty. And so, of course, you know, everyone in the chat, that means you have to work harder for giving us support and our, uh, our guest as well. well. As always, thank you, Tammy Moore, who's in the chat room providing closed captioning. So if you're new and you know someone would like to be with us and has a hearing impairment or a language uh, barrier, please be aware that Tammy will type all the way through the session for you, keeping you on task. Our um, subject today is uh, top 10 free resources from Discovery Education. Our special guest today is Porter Palmer. And she has a newbie question coming at what is the Discovery Education Network? So I asked a few minutes ago who was new in the session. I know a couple of people within, they've watched the uh, Getting Started video. Can I just check again? Is there anyone else new? Just give me a smiley face if you are. Otherwise, I'm just going to pass by how to participate and get you right into the process. Yes, Ms. Durst, you're always new. <laughs> you know what, knows what to do. So. Um, so let's move on to, we all know what to do. Just remember when we're going to uh, do the world map, there's your pointer with the starburst. OK, Sebastian, I'm sorry, you are new. so couple of things to note. You've already figured out how to send messages and send to this group by typing in here. But just watch. If anyone sees their text as blue, that means you're either talking directly to someone that you know or the moderators. And if you want everyone to hear it, you need to make sure it says this room, something that people aren't aware of. Um, and just be aware that, of course, the moderators see all and know all, so we, we do um, see all the messages that people contribute. Uh, we've already figured out the emoticons. In a few minutes, I'm going to ask you to vote. So it's green check of red X here down at the bottom of the screen. And uh, if you want to come to the mic, we'll be asking you to raise your hand, which is the blue hand with the green arrow. You do need a USB headset to come and talk to us at the mic, which is down here access on, becomes yellow off. It's, um, of course, grayed out. But um, if you don't have the headset, we do get feedback. And so we'd like to suggest that you put your hands up or type your question in the chat room. And we can uh, try to get your answers. So uh, who said they were new here? I missed it. Sebastian, on the whiteboard tools, we have a little blue wand with a red starburst. I'm going to ask, give you permission to use those tools in a minute. We're going to go playing on the world map. So that's the important things to remember. Uh, we have. A really good suggestion here, if anyone does not have their layout looking like this, participants, chat, and whiteboard, I suggest you go to the menu bar up here to view layouts and switch it to wide layout, because the default one has everything um, stacked on the left-hand side of your screen. So I'll give you a second if you want to do that. And right, Peggy says, the chat flies back very, very quickly, so it's hard to see. That's why we suggest you do that. Okay, and the most important people new, and those who've been here before, is we do have a website, live.classroom20.com, where we keep all the recordings of today's sessions as a blog. You'll get a recording of the full Illuminate uh, session, an MP4 file, the MP3 audio file, uh, a list of all the uh, links and uh, the live binders that we post after each session. So you can always go back and refer to it and send people to the website because we know that you'll, they will enjoy uh, picking up on the information if they've missed seeing or listening to Porter today. OK, everyone has to have a whiteboard tool, and I just gave you permissions to use it. Now, go to that blue wand of the red starburst. And click over here in the map. Some people have already done it through here in the United States. So England, anyone else? Shambles over here in Thailand. Someone's in Australia today. Canada, welcome Canucks. Really nice to see. Have support from people on north of the border. Lots of people are in the United States. So we have to get more people. Now, somebody was there from Barrie. And uh, we have to get more people in Ontario clicking in on Saturday morning. 
it is great to see the, the, the worldwide network that we uh, join together and supporting each other on the weekends. So here is another good task for you. You all have uh, remembered where to vote. And it's the bottom right hand corner of your participants window. The question for our first poll question is, have you used discovery education resources in your classroom? Green check if you have, and red X if you have not. I'm going to take a look at the results now. 44% of you have used the uh, resources, and about 30% have not. So I hope you can share back and forth what your experiences are, and join Porter in uh, giving her your insights into using the tools. Let's go to our next classroom. Excuse me, our next poll question: Are you a Dan Star? Thanks, Peggy, for clearing the votes because I didn't see that. I think so. A lot of X's here. 62% are not. So, Porter, I hope you can help us out um, discovering how we can do that. And we have Pat and Barry asking the question. Well, that's a newbie question, and, and I think uh, Porter will cover that in a second. So, thanks for the question, and we'll keep track of it for you. And here's our last poll question Have you ever attended a DEN virtual conference? We can check if you have Red X if you haven't. I can already see, Porter, there's a lot of people who have not. There you go. Almost 55% have not. So again, we'll look forward to hearing all about uh, virtual DEN conferences. So let's get started again. The topic today is top 10 free resources from Discovery Education. And our special guest is Porter Palmer. Palmer pardon me. And I'm going to give you a little bit of background about Porter. Again, as always, I haven't met Porter face to face, but I have a wonderful opportunity to meet her as you do today. And that's how you'd like to know. Porter describes her beginning in the education world at the age of five when she used to grade the workbooks of her older brother. Since that time, she has moved on to teaching special education for over a decade in South Carolina, working with students of all ages and with a variety of disabilities. And she is currently a manager for the Discovery Education Network, commonly known as DEN, a global community of educators supported by Discovery Education. She helps manage events for DEN leadership councils, and she supports communication with DEN members members through social media efforts, and she does presentations on a wide variety of topics related to education, technology, assessment, and special education. And I know, Porter, I'm going to let you take the mic in a second. If there's anything else you want to add to that information, please feel free to do it. But the first part of your session today is to answer that newbie question. What is the Discovery Education Network? And welcome, Porter. We're really, really happy that you could be with us today. So the microphone is all yours. Thank you so much for having me. I am thrilled to spend part of my day with you guys today. So the newbie question is, what is the Discovery Educator Network? And really, at its core, we are a community of educators um, that are passionate about teaching with digital media. We're passionate about sharing resources, collaborating, and networking. Currently, there are over 100,000 members. And those members, um, are many of them are DEN stars. And the difference between DEN members and DEN stars is that DEN stars agree that they want to share with others the power of digital media, the power of the community. And so they we agree to share that with others a couple of times each year. And when I say share with others, it means share with a group of perhaps three people, even over a lunch break. And what we give you in exchange for that um, is support. So we invite you to um, apply to attend our week-long summer institutes. Um, 
join us for online and in-person events. If you are a DIN star, we provide you training kits so that when you are working with that group of um, teachers and you're helping them learn about digital media and sharing your resources with them and doing that collaboration, we send you training kits to help you with that. We also host a number of in-person um, and online events. You'll hear me reference later our spring virtual conference, which is coming up on April 30th, and it's delivered via webinar, just very similar to this one. In addition, there are in-person events across the United States and some often in Canada. Um, and so we welcome you guys, if you are a subscriber, to become a member of the Discovery Educator Network and become a star discovery educator. So I did just mention the word subscriber. Um, to be a star, you do actually need to have a subscription to Discovery Education, but you don't need to be a subscriber to access all of the information that I'm going to show you today. We have a great deal of information that is available prior to logging in. So I know that some of you are in countries that we don't even offer service currently, um, but you will be able to access a number of the the sites that I mentioned today, some of them feature contests, and you may not be eligible for the contest portions, but the information that is there, the resources, you will be able to get to. So with that, we're going to dig into the top 10 free resources from Discovery Education. And I want to start with Kathy Schrock's Guide for Educators. So I'm going to start the tour. And remember, you are going to get all of these links um, following this presentation in the live binder. I am throwing them into the window for you. So. Kathy Schrock's Guide for Educators has really been around for a long time. Um, and she was really, or is really, a pioneer in this field of educational technology. This is a great go-to guide for educators. She continually updates this website. There are teacher helpers. So you have presentations that she's done. Um, you have links to her blog. Um, if any of you need readability analysis tools, there's a Fry's readability graph here. And so her website is part of Discovery Education now, and there's all of this fabulous information for you guys to access directly from Kathy Schrock's guide. I love that you can pull out and just look through the subjects. Um, I was a former special education teacher, so I'm actually going to click on special ed and counselors so that you guys are able to see that. There's information about American Sign Language. I really love that American Sign Language browser. You can actually go in and type a word and it will show you the sign language, a video of someone doing that symbol in sign language. So it's just full of information. I hope you guys will just look through um, find all of this fabulous information um, that's here from Kathy. She adds things all the time. You'll notice in the middle of the page, new sites this month. She also features a theme of the month. I'm going to click on the theme of the month. So the theme of the month for March. Um, so I mean, it's just a great opportunity for you guys to have um, quick, hands-on information. So please feel free to ask questions. I'm going to learn my way around Illuminate. So the next site that I want to share with you guys is Puzzle Maker. Let me snag that link real quick. Puzzle Maker is another one of those sort of 
old school websites that folks don't always think about being part of discovery education. And this is available to anyone, these free puzzles. There are word search puzzles, um, crisscross puzzles, math squares, cryptograms. I know folks who love cryptograms. These double puzzles, I've not even messed with a double puzzle before, but you just pull up very simply and you enter the information, your words, and it will create the puzzle for you. I wonder if it will work for me in this window. I bet it won't. Um, so just all of these fabulous puzzles for you guys to go through, all of it free, all of it available for you here on, oh, let me give you the link. How about that? Um, at discoveryeducation.com slash free puzzle maker. If you guys have any favorite, um, if you guys have any favorite puzzles that you use, um, yeah, I'd love to hear about that. It's been around for a long time. So make sure you guys try this out in your own browser. Click on some of the links. I'll actually give you like five to ten seconds to click on a couple of them and look at them. All right, so now that you've had a chance to do that, the next site that I want to share with you guys, and again, all of these are, do not require, oh, I jumped a whole bunch of them, sorry. Um, I'll learn Illuminate one of these days. Um, all of these are prior to login, so even if you don't subscribe to Discovery Education, all of these are available for you. Now, my new favorite is the Hub for Teachers. Discovery just launched a new channel um, called the Hub, and they're really aiming at families and the opportunity for families to view um, television together. And it's all about really good storytelling. So the Transformers are there. Strawberry Shortcake is there. Um, and so they launch storytelling in the classroom. So if you see storytelling in the classroom, and you'll see it change here in a second, um, there are lesson plans for you related to pre-writing and drafting all of the steps that are part of the actual writing process. You can pull up the standards and get suggested at-home writing activities, writing reminders. There are checklists for your students that you can download. So if you look at um, on the left-hand side, you'll see each of the parts of the writing process. And those drop down. And I'm going to pull and look at the K2 writing. And then once I've moved to that, you guys will want to click on the word story mapping, perhaps, so that you're able to see the actual lesson. So there are lesson plans here. And I'll give you just a minute to explore that. As I'm talking, you guys can look at their story mapping. Um, pull up whichever grade you guys are interested in. Um, from Here's pre-writing. You can see over on your left-hand side, there's an area for you guys to go explore. And I'll give you just a second, because I do want you to play around here and look for things that are important for you. So you can click on the links right here in the window. Um, they're on the left-hand side. Just another second or two. So 
I went back to the the main hub page that I'd already shared. Let me throw it back in the window for you guys. Um, the next thing that I want to show you here, um, the contest has already ended. You'll see that in the bottom towards the middle. Um, there was a, a writing, a storytelling contest that the hub did. And I'm sure there'll be another one this next school year. So keep an eye out there for an opportunity. But you can also, from here, go and show your students the, the winning teams. So what grades and what their stories were. Um, so you're able to read about the entries um, that students submitted. So these are great ways to model good storytelling um, and have it come from peers. And then the last thing that I want to show you here on the Hub for Teachers is this section on the bottom right hand side, Transform Science Class. And we talked about storytelling in the classroom, but I also want you um, to take a look. As I'm talking here, feel free to click the information on the left-hand side of the screen. Um, Transformers Prime, the Transformers, I'm sure you guys have seen the television shows or the movies about the Transformers. They do just that. They transform into something new. and this transforming science class is all about lessons that have to do with metamorphosis, transformation, change. Um, Peggy, you're absolutely right. There is um, a natural hook because the kids love the transformers. So I'm going to pop over to lesson plans so that you guys can see that. There's the life cycle of a butterfly. Shady Shadows, Phases of the Moon, and In Hot Water. Take a second to look at those while I'm talking. You will notice that these are K2 and 3-5. Um, there are resources that we have here that are for all grade levels. Some of them are just K5. Some of them are just high school. Um, so there are a variety of grade levels that are represented. So feel free just to click on a couple of these lesson plans for a second. Oh, good, Roxanne. I'm happy to see that you see major projects that your teachers use. That's awesome. Um, I'll show you the do you know facts. So there are these cool, fascinating um, facts about everyday things in science that have to do with transformations. So explore that for a second while I go grab the next link. So the next page that I want to share with you guys is the Siemens We Can Change the World Challenge. And this is for all grades. Come back web tour. There we go. So this is the We Can Change the World Challenge um, from Siemens. And um, the deadline, you should read this at the very top, the very first thing. The applications are due by March 15th. <laughs> Thanks, Peggy. <laughs> um, so the, the challenge ends March 15th. Um, it is about sustainability, and it's for grades K through 12. I believe that this, and y'all are going to have to forgive me for not knowing the specific details, I believe it is for the United States only. Um, let's see if I can find out 
where the official rules are. They're probably going to be select a grade. Um, so even though um, the challenge itself is maybe maybe limited to specific um, areas or specific countries. I'm sure that there are specific rules somewhere. The information that is here is absolutely fabulous. So you guys can check out you know, the specific grade that you're interested in. Um, but on the screen that I'm in, you're going to want to scroll down a little bit. You can look at Echo Heroes in Action, and you can look at the finalists um, from 2010. So I'm going to click on one of those links so that you guys can see that. And Peggy's right. You can absolutely um, do a project even if you aren't going to submit that to the actual challenge. Um, last year, I believe it was the middle school group. I'm going to jump and find the middle school group because they are from right here in my backyard in Michigan where it is snowing, by the way. Um, the kids that won last year from the middle school, let's see if I can find them. They did this whole thing about not idling your car. And so it was called No One Idling. And on the page that I'm on, if you scroll down, you can read um, more information. But what they, were, what they found was the problem was that parents would get to the school about 20 minutes early. And they would sit in their cars and run their cars and let it idle. And one of the things that they talked about was the fact that you get zero miles per gallon when you let your your car idle. And they had the opportunity to actually go speak, um, I think it was like to the United Nations, um, to show their proposal. Um, I mean, it was a fabulous idea and they are working to change the laws here in Michigan to make it a no idling state. So the Siemens We Can Change um, the World Challenge um, is really a great opportunity for you to get your students actively involved. I'm going to click on resources just so you guys can take a look at the lesson plans. I know that you guys are asking about that information. So that's under the resources tab. And then there are sample project ideas. And then I'm going to click on le lesson plans so that you can see those. So there are a number of lesson plans. Hopefully, there we go. Lesson plan one shows up for you. Um, there are virtual labs here. So those should show up for you. I'm going to give you a second to explore the virtual labs. So I'll give you like one minute. You can also, over on the left-hand side, click and look at the sample project ideas, lesson plans. I'm going to be quiet for a minute and let you guys do that. Everybody able to find something interesting here? I'm able to watch the chat now. So Okay, so Lynn wants to know how to get to the page that I am on. Um, I clicked on resources. So when you click on resources,
and I happen to be in the middle school, the first thing that you want to make sure you do is choose the grade level that you're interested in. Select resources, and then I clicked on virtual labs. Just another minute and let you guys explore, because this is really fabulous stuff. With that said, let's move on to our next site. Um, I've done some work with this group this year, the Energy Balance folks. Um, so Energy Balance 101 comes from the Healthy Weight Commitment Foundation, along with our partnership with Discovery Education. Um, there was a sweepstakes last year. There will be another sweepstakes. You'll find that here on the sweepstakes tab. It's on the right-hand side of the page. Um, I believe that there is going to be another one announced fairly soon. Um, and what they do is a playground makeover in their sweepstakes, so playground equipment. Energy balance really is about the scales of energy. So I'm going to scroll down. I don't know whether this widget will launch. Let me try and see. If, did a widget launch for you? If not, I want you guys to scroll down um, on the right-hand side for the lunchbox. And you should be able to pull up the scales of energy. So I want you to play with the lunchbox for a minute. Um, the lunchbox shows you, if you drag over what you ate for breakfast, what the calories were, and then what the activity you did, and you're able to see how the scales tip. And so it talks about reaching an energy balance throughout your day, not just meal by meal. Um, this, from the Healthy Weight Commitment Foundation and from us at Discovery Education, we really don't talk about specific things that you're supposed to eat. Um, they really feel strongly that kids, it's all about the balance, that you eat things. They're not talking about, um, you know, cutting out foods, um, but they really want you to think about the actual balance. You can also, there in the lunchbox, click on anatomy of a food label. And if you have pop-ups blocked, you could have a problem accessing it. Um, but there's a widget that will allow you to pull up and learn how to read food labels. So I'm pulling it up, and I'm going to look at the flakes. And over, once you pull that up, you'll see arrows on the right-hand side of the little pop-up, or sorry, left-hand side of the pop-up. And it gives you information about what each of those pieces mean. So what does serving size mean? It's a nice little primer for teachers, for parents who are really wanting to learn more. Now with that said, we've not even gotten into the lesson plans yet. So on the teachers tab, um, you'll see that there are modules for grades K through 2 and 3 through 5, and it's an online curriculum. And so I'm going to pull up module, I'm going to go to 3-5 for you guys. So I'm going to go to the first module. And there are four lessons usually in each of the modules. So you can view the lesson, you can download the lesson. I'm going to view the lesson. I believe that will show up for you guys. And so you can download the lesson, you can download worksheets that go along with it. So I'm going to give you just a second. Um, I know that you can see the lesson, but I want you guys to be able to scroll down and look at the connections to the standards. 
Um, there are extensions, um, all of the procedures. It is full of information. And you'll also notice at the top, right above what is energy balance there, um, and remember, scroll all the way down so that you can see everything. But when you're back at the top, you can flip and see different lessons. So there are drop-down menus. Watch, I'm going to change things on you. Um, so decisions, decisions, very easily up at the top. And they are connected to the standards as well. Just another second there, because I'm going to keep going through the tabs that are here under energy balance. Oh, this one is really exciting to me. On the right-hand side of the screen, you'll see energy balance in action. Go now. Let's see what's going on there. So they want you to have your students share artwork showing energy balance in action. And so they want paintings and collages and not pictures of your students necessarily. Um, and then they want you to post them and they're going to actually put them in a gallery. Um, like an online gallery. So it's a way to get your students' artwork published. Um, and so that's on the right-hand side of the page under Energy Balance in Action. I'm going to click over to the Families tab so that you'll see that there's information for families as well as for classrooms. And I just have to tell you, um, as a classroom teacher, I would probably poke around here too, knowing that not all families are going to be engaging in this. Um, and so y'all are talking about riding bicycles. So here are all about bicycle riding. Hopefully it'll go. Go. I'll let you guys poke around here and look at this information for just a second before I move on to community. Any questions so far? So on the community tab, you'll find, and you guys can scroll down, um, all sorts of information from other partners that are involved in this. Um, and these are just links to great websites that have to do with health and healthy eating and exercising, so that energy balance. Let me grab our next link. Boy, Peggy, you're fast before I even get there. Um, the Young Scientists Challenge. Go ahead and write down or put in your head that the Young Scientist Challenge, um, the 2011 challenge, ends on April 15th, so tax day. Um, students have the opportunity to win $25,000. Um, so and this is specifically from 3M and Discovery Education, looking for students in grades 5 through 8 who are um, enthusiastic about science. They're going to win. The top 10 students are going to receive um, an all-expense-paid trip to Minnesota to the 3M Innovation Center. Um, let's look at some of the teacher tools. Um, so in addition to 
the challenge, there's also tools for teachers. So there are, again, oh my goodness, lesson plans. There are videos and interactives. There are webinars that you guys can go and check out. So I'm going to click and see if we can get to the lesson plans here. There we go, in our web tour. Um, and again, here you have fabulous lesson plans. This is for about a middle school group. Um, there are f lesson plans, videos, and interactives. Look over on your left-hand side, um, and I'm going to tour around some things. I welcome you to tour around as well. I'm going to look at the videos and interactives. So flu season abounds. There are um, is an interactive here about flu season. So. H1N1, food safety. So guys, scroll down and take just a second to look at these free resources. Anybody find anything fascinating? Please share with us. Okay, so the next site that I want to share with you is fairly new, and that is the Toyota Teen Driver. This one, I promise you, if you have kids who are close to driving age or even younger, um, they will have more fun, let's scroll down, um, you'll see on your right hand side, lower down, this heads up, test your driving skills by playing heads up. I'm going to click on that and see if it will go there. I had someone on our Facebook page just recently say, my child gets up early in the mornings and um, plays this game and rushes home from school to play this game. It's all about testing their driving skills. Maybe you guys can click on it. It's not clicking for me here in the tour. Um, but it's a great game about paying attention to the road, not being distracted. Um, and it's it's engaging and it teaches safety to our students. I'm going to look at educators for a moment so that you guys can see the teacher resources. So there is, and I'm going to scroll down, you should scroll down as well. There are quizzes, there are lesson plans, there are take home um, activities. I'm going to jump into one of the quizzes. I don't, I don't think that changed for you. Um, and I'll give it a second for it to still load. There is a contest involved in this. Um, I believe you need to be in the United States to take part in this um, in the contest. Um, it goes until May 3rd. But you don't have to be in the United States to take advantage of the materials that are here under the Educators tab. So there are teacher resources. I'm going to give you a minute to take a look at the lesson plans, the quizzes. Um, those don't pop out in a separate window, so I want you to engage in them there. Um, down at the 
very bottom, you'll also see additional educator resources. And please do play the game. Now, I'm only going to touch on this next one for just a second. This is really new. Um, it is um, one of the pages that I am not as familiar with because it is just so new. Turf Mutt is um, a website dedicated to saving the planet one yard at a time. It really teaches students about um, becoming environmental stewards and doing things on a small scale. So just taking care of your own front lawn as opposed to trying to save the entire world or even as big as we were talking about the We Can Change the World Challenge where those students here in Michigan talked about making the whole state a no idling state. This is about making a difference one yard at a time. So I've just clicked on the Educators tab. You should have all gone there with me. Um, again, guys, there are lesson plans. Um, there are, scroll down with me for a second. Under the lesson plans, there are puzzles. And I'm not sure whether this will work. Yes, so I just clicked on US Ecosystems Map. So again, this is US-centric. The lesson plans are appropriate for anyone. Um, there's an area for students. So scroll around and look at the information here that's for students. And then you can win a $5,000 grant for your class. Again, that is for the United States um, participants. So take just a second to explore the lesson plans, the puzzles, and then I will um, move on to the next site here in just a minute. So Web20.11 is a very appropriate website for our group today because this is all about Classroom 2.0 and the 21st century classroom. So let me just share with you a moment Web2011. There are tools for internet safety. I know that's an area that we are all concerned with. So there's information for responsible internet use, um, rules for students that have to do with don't overshare your information. There's fabulous videos here that introduce the information for you. Um, so take just a second to click around here. I'm going to look at some of the Web 2.0 tools. So we feature on some of our favorite presentation tools, video tools. Um, I do want to draw your attention for those of you here in the United States, the Win a Wireless Lab sweepstakes. Um, 
you and every person who is an employee in your school should be entering every single day to win a wireless lab. I know some folks who are are definitely entering every day and they're getting their the rest of their school to enter. You should enter every day for a chance to win um, a, a wireless lab. And so that's right here. Bookmark it. Set an alarm for you in your calendar to remember to do this. Um, again, that's the win a wireless lab sweepstakes. Um, media literacy. So again, lots of information for your guys. I'm going to go back to the home. Great information for you guys to use on the 21st century classroom. Information that you can use. I clicked on 21st century classroom and that brought me here. I'm going to throw this link in because again, here we have modules. If you will scroll down, um, you'll see lesson plan information, um, articles related to these topics. So teaching students how to be critical thinkers, how they should communicate and collaborate. So take just a second while I grab the next site. And again, we are talking about all of the free resources from Discovery Education. You do not need to have a subscription to Discovery Education to access these materials. Um, you should be able to access them at any time. Um, so the next site are the DIN blogs. And if you're using an RSS um, feed, I really do encourage you to subscribe. Things fly by pretty fast on the blogs. I'm waiting for it to come up. Peggy, is it showing for you? There it comes. All right. So this flies by pretty fast, stuff that's going on. Um, right now, we've got applications open for folks to become a DIN guru. Um, those are people who are more than just stars. They are superstars. Um, and I know a few of you who are in this room who I ought to see an application from in the near future. Um, so things that are going on here, and I should say, Peggy, there are only currently five gurus, um, and they, I don't believe, are in the room today. Um, we are accepting applications for another five more gurus. Um, the Quest for Curiosity here, let me click on that for you guys. This is a really cool thing. Um, it's an activity to do with your students. Um, this would be for subscribers to Discovery Education only. Um, but I do want you guys to know that this information is there. Um, it's a nice little um, scavenger hunt within Discovery Education streaming. I'm so glad you signed up for it. Um, you should always keep an eye on the DIN events. Um, when I don't forget to update the calendar, and I am behind, so you're probably not going to see as much information as you should about webinars here. But there are, we always list all of our free webinars um, on this page that says DIN events. Um, so lots of stuff going on there. We welcome you to check out on the right-hand side, you'll see webinar archives. 
And so you can pull up and actually see archives of webinars that we have done in the past. giving you just a second to poke around there, and I'm going to move on to our last site. So I want you to know where you can go basically to find all of the featured programs that I shared with you today. Oh, thanks, Peggy. You're faster than I am. So all of the programs that I shared with you and loads of others are on this page. So we didn't even talk about Ready Classroom. I just scrolled down, so you'll probably need to scroll down with me. We didn't talk about Science Fair Central or Science of Everyday Life. Um, I only hit on the top ten, and really they aren't even the top ten. They were ten that I like to talk about. Um, so there are tabs about science and technology, environment, health, language arts, um, life skills, teacher support. Um, this has everything in one place. Um, and really, I could have just come here and done the entire webinar for you guys. Um, but I really think that this is a great place for you to start to poke around and get some great ideas. So with that, I'll turn it back over to Lorna and Peggy. And I thank you guys so much. Please ask me any questions. I'll do my best to um, answer them for you. Great. Thanks very much, uh, Porter. I, I know as several people in the chat room said, our heads are swimming. We're so overwhelmed with the fantastic amount of information. Just to remind that we, Peggy Hughes, I'm dropping in a link to Live Binders so you can very quickly access all the information that Port has brought to us today. There are a couple of questions that have, have popped up, and I see a few hands raised. I know the one question that keeps up coming up is um, applying to be a dance star or part of the process. And those of us who are not in the United States or have a little bit of angst, how do we connect? Is there any opportunity for us? So those are actually two questions. How do you sign up and will you let us in? There you go. OK, so to be an actual DEN star, you do need to be a subscriber of Discovery Education. Um, so and we are in Canada. Um, and we are in other, some other countries as well, but we're primarily in the United States and Canada. Um, I'm going to share with you a link that may require you to be logged in. Um, the, the bottom line is, is that to actually be a star, um, you do have to be um, a subscriber of Discovery Education. If you are a subscriber of Discovery Education, right, if you can log in, you're a subscriber. So if you have a login and username, um, then when you log in, you're going to see a series of, um, you can just go, let me just tell you, go to this website. So log in, Lynn, and then you click this link. And right up at the very top of this page on the right, it is become a star, find out how. So you do need to be a subscriber in order to be, um, you can, you're correct. You can access the blogs. You can access anything that I showed you up until this moment without ever being a subscriber. But to be a DIN star, I'm not logged in, to be a DIN star, oh, that's the tour thing. To be a DIN star, you actually do need to be a subscriber. But everything else that I've showed you, everything else that I've talked about other than being a DIN star, so you can get to the blog, you can get to all of those resources without being a subscriber, um, without being a DIN star. But if you are a subscriber, we do welcome you to become a part of our community. Um, when you log in to Discovery Education, you'll see DEN as one of your services. And it'll take you to this page, and you'll click Find Out How to Become a Star. And so becoming a star is free. Um, 
So I'm just maybe missing something because I've tried to do this with you and ask for a code from your administrator of your school. I'm missing something. So you're not a subscriber. Your school does not have a, subscri a subscription to Discovery Education. I guess that's clear. I'm not in a school right now. Okay, then that's correct. Um, it's a subscription for schools and is a paid subscription. Okay. So you have to go through your school to get it then. You do. Okay. So that was that was cleared up. People were talking about different languages. I think Peggy did for us that in the chat. And uh, there is in English. There isn't any accommodation for any other language. Is that correct? Um. Not on the free resources sites. The free resources sites are all about partnerships that we have with companies, um, primarily here in the United States. And that's how we're able to offer the free resources is hmm. through the sponsorship of those companies. And so it's sometimes hit or miss, you know, who contacts us and says, hey, we want to work together. Uh, Janet how in the there chat. There was a Sorry, question yes. about, um, about homeschooling and what I would recommend, let me go to discoveryeducation.com. Um, I believe that you can request, um, unfortunately I am not in sales or fortunately I am not in sales, um, but you, <coughs> excuse me, should be able to contact us and um, ask for a, um, a test drive of our services <coughs> and um, you know someone in sales can contact you. Perfect. You know, I, I think we, we really taxed that voice. Um, let's give us uh, a chance to close out the show and if there's more questions after the show, then we can leave it to a few more minutes to um, follow up on questions. But I think you've got on track. People's questions have been answered as you go through the show. So I'm going to close the web tour and help close out the show. Uh, our upcoming shows uh, on March the 12th will be featured music teacher Carol Boris and her students. So we're really looking for that opportunity because we have never had anything with music. And then March the 19th, we're uh, excited to have Ben Papel and Steve Muth from VoiceFred with all the new features that are going on with VoiceFred. Uh, there are some interviews going on with uh, Steve Harganum this week on a feature of education on March the 9th, on Monday. Kevin Kiley on what technology wants on March the 8th, Tuesday. Don Smitherman on crowdsourced learning in March 10th. Thursday we have Mitch Resnick from the MIT Media Lab. So there's some more really great resources. I don't know, I have a hard time catching up, but there's so many exciting things going on. Just to remind you that there is a link to the survey which will pop up at the end of the session. If you uh, are asking for a uh, certificate of professional development and it doesn't come to you, please write down the email address here live at classroom20.com. So if you're not getting it, and give us a week or so because sometimes we don't get the results back from the survey. And uh, as soon as Peggy does get them, she's right on task and sending it out. But if you haven't got it, live at classroom20.com. We try our best uh, uh, to get everything for you. Now another great opportunity for you is you know that we have on the archive page the MP4 file for today's show. So we also load it up onto iTunes and here's our iTunes U channel which is tinyurlcr 20 live iTunes U. So you can go back and subscribe to the podcast and put it on your iPods or your iPads when you're exercising so you get a chance to review the program again. So. Uh, a special thanks again, Porter. Uh, I am so overwhelmed. I'm a parent advocate. do a lot of work with parents. I can see them running uh, tandem with everything you provided today and all the specific features for them as well. It's uh, been a really, really awesome show. I know everyone will give you a hand of applause because it's just been so much information and so many good opportunities for everyone here. A special thanks again to Steve Hargadon, the founder of Classroom 20 Live and Future of Education, who is our uh, um, mentor and uh, supporter, and everyone here who came to uh, 
support the show, and we'd love to see you every Saturday morning. Please continue to come. And of course, we um, thank Illuminate uh, and Learn Central for the support of this webcast. So let's go back again here for a second. If there are any more questions for Porter, just pop it in the, the chat, or uh, if you have a mic, you uh, raise your hand, I'll give you mic access. I know that we have some, don't forget about the live binders, because if you lost track of all this and you came to the chat, live binders is a really good way to access. And there, Peggy's dropped a link in the chat window again. Can Canadians sign up for the Discovery Education Network newsletter? It won't let me put in my postal code. So do we have an answer for that, Porter? This is for the newsletter. I'm not sure if Porter's hearing is just at the moment. How do you go back and watch this? Peggy, you drop in the link to the archives again. There you go. So Carrie, I hope that answers your question. And Porter, I don't know if you put your mic back on. Or your mic went to sleep. <laughs> OK. That's fine. There was just a question about the newsletter. Were you able to help us with that? They couldn't get the postal code in for the newsletter. Is it still something we need to work on? Yeah, pop in our uh, Twitter I hashtag, Peggy, or thank you, our Twitter ID. Well, we seem to have lost Porter's mic. OK. That's a great idea. Uh, Paula, see Stanley's saying to Paula about uh, your Skype conversations are really an opportunity to have a, an event towards becoming a dance star. Do we have any more questions? For Porter, I see your mic's back on. Porter, is it working? Hmm. No, it's not. Oh my gosh, everyone has to just have my voice going. Well, if you have any more questions, type them in the chat, and then Porter can try and give them back to you by typing. Ah, I hear you. Ah, you do. Yay. I do. OK. OK, so to answer the Canadian problem, um, I've not had that question before, so I don't specifically know the answer. I'm certain that we would love for you to have the newsletter. Um, so please send me an email, and I will forward it to the people who manage that form. I. And make sure you give me a link to where you were trying to sign up. Thanks, C. Stanley. She's so again, my you. email is porter underscore palmer at discovery dot com, and then I will forward the information on, and we'll get that fixed. Because I know that the intent is not to keep you from it. It's probably just um, something that's left over from way back when, before we were in Canada. Well, I do know there is access to Discovery Streaming in Canada through the different uh, uh, ministries, so that is available. But it's not as readily accessible if you're an individual who's not in the education system, per se, you know, in the, in the school or the school board. So it's a little harder right. to get access to information. So Ken asked if we had a Twitter account. And I know that Peggy shared my Twitter account. And I'm just going to tell you, you're going to be bored if you follow me because I tweet personal things. Um, it's a journal for me. But I am the person who tweets from at den, D-E-N. Um, 
and so that's where I manage my own professional learning network. So it's at DEN. Yes, and we're thanks. also on Facebook under Discovery Ed. Are there any more questions for Porter? Well, Porter, I know you've talked a lot, and you and every minute was worth every was precious. I cannot believe how many you're great at operating web tour, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic job! I'm learning a look at, look at the way she's you know uh, presenting. So you're a professional. We appreciate every minute that you have been with us, and uh, thank you very much. I think we will close out the show, and uh, we'll get the link to you, Porter, for the recording. So thanks again very much. Any party words you want to leave us with? Well, I do because I'm being asked to mention that you can access um, Discovery Education on the iPad um, just by going to Discovery Education Mobile. So it's not actually an app for Discovery Education. It's just a mobile website. Um, but if you are um, a Discovery Education subscriber, you can get access to your subscription on the iPad. Thanks, Peggy, for the link. I'll just wait a couple seconds. To see if there's any more questions, Porter, then, and then we'll let you go. Yes, Rita, you have a question. Go ahead. Is there a time limit on the Denstar application? Um, there is a time limit on the STAR application. You have to submit your um, event, I think it's within 60 to 90 days. It says on the application um, how many days you have. Um, so we just expect you to submit, you know, to register that you have shared the power of discovery education or um, ed technology, digital media with others. So can you access the DIN from another country, from Europe? You can access all of the um, materials that I shared today from Europe, from another country. Um, you can't access the Discovery Educator Network, which is not the blog, it's a separate community page, um, but all of the resources today you can access. Thank you guys so much for having me. You're most welcome. Let's turn it around. It's really thank you for being with us. It just wouldn't be possible without you. Again, I want to send a, a thanks to Tammy, who I think she's left for the day. She didn't get. She's just, you know, Porter to have someone come in every week and type their heart out is just phenomenal. So That's amazing. It is. We're very fortunate. To, the people in the chat room are tremendous supporters, and they're always sharing their ideas. So. We really love this opportunity every Saturday morning to connect together and uh, learn and, and share. So again, thank you very much well, for being with us. With your us. permission, I would love to share your events out on the, the DEN's Twitter um, and see oh, if absolutely. Can get you absolutely. Some, some more folks to join in and learn. And um, so I'll make sure that I keep following along and I'll help promote you guys. Great. At live class, Peggy, what is it? Peggy knows everything. I forget all these. What's our Twitter ID? 
at class at live class two zero. Yes, Peggy's telling you we have oh, been getting yes. Okay. That's our yeah, great. So off to the rest of our weekend. Thank you very much again for being with us today. Have a great Saturday, Porter, and everyone Thank else. Thank you. Take care.